It's time for your daily crypto update with Framework Fortune Crypto. I'm your host, Ben. Let's dive in. So I've been talking about a big move coming one way or the other, or at least a pretty decent sized move. And we're seeing that finally happen today out of the consolidation. Bitcoin, like I've been talking about, has been pretty bearish on the 30 minute. You can see where the 20 day crossed over all the indicators and dropped down. And we've dropped down to this 33,000 area of support for now. Looking at it on the four hour chart, you can see this is the same area where we've tested multiple times, but this is the fourth time. And even on the daily chart, Bitcoin is still bearish. So the question becomes, are all the cryptos going to continue to dump with Bitcoin? Or are we going to see that shift that I've been talking about here soon with Ethereum maybe taking the lead? So we've got to keep an eye on both of these pretty close. But whereas Bitcoin is pointing down and all those indicators are way above it, Ethereum is kind of in the middle right now. So Bitcoin affected the whole entire market with drop by dropping, but Ethereum still has a chance to hold up. It's testing this 2600 support that it's been testing multiple times. So the dip that happened on Bitcoin is a lot bigger of a dip than what happened on Ethereum. Ethereum is down 3%. Bitcoin, you can see, is down 5%. So we're getting more validation that this switch may be happening. This big pullback today across the market, though, is concerning because everything is following Bitcoin's lead still, which I do not like. If we go to percent change up here, we don't have anything on this list of cryptos we normally watch that are green. Everything is pulled back. So I do think Bitcoin is going to be bearish for a little bit. We'll see if it can hold up in this area. Just could be a little fake out dip before another leg up. Or this could be the start of a real true full bear market maybe for the next couple of months instead of a short term pullback bear market like we've been in. This may be longer than I'm expecting. But if Ethereum overall, if you look at it on a higher time frame, you can see this nice trend line that Ethereum is holding up. Ethereum is still technically bullish. And in fact, it hasn't even came down to the trend line yet. The area that it's trying to hold now is above that trend line. And you can see even more past support and resistance back here that is holding up. We can take and extend this line straight across there. So as of now, that is support. So Ethereum is still in consolidation and can still pop up instead of shooting down. Where Bitcoin's consolidation looks a lot less likely for a breakout. Bitcoin is basically going sideways and making those lower highs like I was talking about. So we don't know for sure if this is going to crash or if Bitcoin is going to rebound still. But I don't like this pullback today. That's for sure. So of course we're getting pullbacks all across the market. Matic back down to that 150 area it's trying to hold the 200 day as of now uh, on the four hour but the 20 day is below the 50 and the 100 and the 50 is actually close to crossing over that 100 but if we look at matic on the daily chart it's still above all indicators still just right there right below the 20 and the indicators are where they're supposed to be so matic technically still is bullish so I could go through more of the altcoins today, but I don't think it's really necessary because as you see, I'm clicking through here. Most of them are all at some type of area of support testing to see if the consolidation is going to continue or we're going to drop out to the downside. At the moment, you want to be very cautious. And I'm probably, if we don't start seeing some type of rebound tonight or tomorrow, then I'm probably going to start taking some losses on the positions that I've been holding the swing trades and just be straight cash and only day trade these cryptos until we get some type of confirmation of the up or down direction. Could be good buying opportunities. This also could be catching a fallen knife. We just don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. So all we can do is just make the best educated guess and make the best decisions. Now, there's a lot going on around the world right now with governments, economies, cryptos, 
social justice, all of these different things that are affecting the monetary supplies of each country. You know, there's inflation going on. A lot of countries are in big debt and still printing money to try to pay that. But that's not really probably going to work. It's never shown to work. It's Keynesian economics. And Keynesian economists have gotten it wrong a lot more times than they've gotten it right. So there is a possibility that we will see several different scenarios play out. Number one, with the astronomical debt that's never been heard of before, unprecedented debt that America has, we could see the American dollar crash here soon. That's something that I've been warning about for the past year. And the U.S. dollar has dropped in its purchasing power. So if the U.S. dollar goes to zero or goes to a very low amount, that means your dollars are going to be buying less of these cryptos unless that drop also crashes the crypto market. See, we've had quantitative easing going on since the 2008 housing market. And quantitative easing is where the Federal Reserve tries to keep interest rates low so the money that the government borrows is being borrowed very cheaply and can be paid back for less value than they actually borrowed. It's a little bit of a, a tricky thing to understand at first, but I continue to talk about it and we'll do more videos explaining that on both Framework Fortune Home Channel and the Crypto Channel because it is going to be directly relative to any type of investing assets. So the crypto market will either do one of two things. It will crash with the US dollar because it's been inflated by all the cheap free money. The government's handing out all these checks. They're giving money and bailouts to all these companies. Like I said, it's at zero interest rates. It's cheap money right now. So if we go into some type of recession and people don't have money to invest in cryptos anymore, then the buying will slow down. The demand for cryptos will slow down because the majority of retail people won't be able to afford them. Maybe your big investors will still be able to afford them, but they're not going to be pushing a lot of these cryptos, especially the meme coins, like they are now where you're getting all this free money. When it's their money that they've spent 12 hours a day working a job or 60 hours a week, 50 hours a week, they're going. To, a lot of people are going to be more or less likely in a recession to put their money in any type of investments. They're going to be saving it for food because food costs are going to go up, gas prices, all of that. The second option, if the U.S. dollar crashes, all the big investors and institutions look at cryptos as a hedge, which there are some that have claimed it to be a store of value and a hedge against government inflation. Decentralized currency is idea for that. So we could see a big shift from people pulling out of government dollars across the world or government currencies and using only cryptocurrencies, which would change the dynamics of the entire market because now the governments don't have control. So theoretically, we could see an explosion. If the US dollar is crashing or the Chinese yuan or the euro are crashing, people might want to get their money out of there. And the easiest thing as far as transaction wise is to buy a cryptocurrency. If you buy gold or silver, you have to buy it and get it shipped to you or you have to buy it with one of the online apps, then you don't actually have the physical product. It's in some storage place, whatever. Same thing with stocks. But if the U.S. currency crashes, the U.S. stock market will more than likely crash as well. And the U.S. housing market is also in a bit of a crisis, which if that crashes, will bring down the stock market as well. So depending on how everything plays out, Cryptos are either going to play a very big part in changing the way economies work or cryptos are going to drop dramatically as people flee out of them trying to find a safe haven somewhere else. And there's not going to be many safe havens. Most of the time in the past, the safe haven was bonds or treasuries, but U.S. is in so much debt and owes so much to the central banks those U.S. bonds and treasuries are what they use to pay back their loans. It's not really going to help if they're not worth anything. You can't pay back a loan if, you're, if your currency is not worth anything because that will make your bonds and yields not worth anything. In the past, the currency's never dropped. 
that hard. The American dollar has been the reserve currency over the past 50, 60 years or something like that. This probably isn't going to happen short term within like the next couple of months because giant macro economic market moves like this take time to actually happen. The Bitcoin crash here could be the start of this crypto crash, of a bigger crypto crash. Just because it has dropped down here to these lows doesn't mean it can't keep going down. It very well can. These support areas don't hold then all these cryptos are going to go down to the next level. And then they will test support again. If they can't hold, they will go down to the next level. So within the next year or two, I think we'll start seeing some effects happening across all investments, especially the stock market. I've been very bearish on the stock market for almost a year now. It's just gotten way too high. Same way Bitcoin got too high, it had to pull back. There's always a price. And why, what I mean by that is there is always a price that buyers will turn into sellers at. For instance, anybody who got in Bitcoin, you know, a few years ago down here at 10,000 and they're hodling, 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 and this has got up to 40,000. Well, some of those people I'm sure who are buyers back here could not resist this type of huge gain. You have to be an extremely disciplined person to hodl through all of this, through that huge of a gain. That normally doesn't happen. This, the whole crypto movement is hot, and I do think that it is going to continue into the future. I think cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology is the future, but it's the same as the dot-com bubble. Back in 2000 when the dot-com bubble happened, there was so many investors and retail traders buying up all the tech stocks that they could. You know, tech's going to change the future. And they were correct, but there was also, you know, hundreds or thousands of tech companies. And a lot of those are not existing anymore today. So you can say, you can be bullish on the crypto market long term, but there's no guarantees that Bitcoin will be the front leader or Bitcoin will even be around, or Ethereum will be the front leader, or Ethereum will even be around. More than likely, Ethereum's not going anywhere. But if some blockchain comes out two years from now, that's better than Ethereum in every single way, well, then Ethereum could get replaced, because that's what happens with technology. Well, those same type of dynamics are going to be the same in the crypto markets, especially because the crypto markets are decentralized. The crypto markets are as free market as you can get anywhere in the world. There's no regulations. There's no government interference. All there is is governments trying to ban it. But that doesn't make cryptos not exist. Even though they're banned in China, Chinese people can still buy cryptos. Just like murder being banned or any other crime, it still happens. It does not erase that problem from the board. If you want to call cryptos a problem... I think cryptos are the solution, and the problem is the governments. So, of course, that's why you're getting pushback from these governments. So, even with a big crash in the crypto market, there will still be some around, and even some that probably outperform the rest of the market. Like we've seen in the last couple of weeks, CKB and a few other cryptos have actually made some decent gains, where the rest of the markets have been going pretty bearish. So... There will be ones that survive. There will be ones that you can always play and day trade and swing trade and all that. But right now, this is so new. It's in its infancy. We have all these other factors around the globe. It's not clear to me which way everything is going to go in the long run or even the short term at the moment. So if you have any questions about any of this stuff that I've talked about today, feel free to hit me up on Instagram, framework underscore fortune, or you can ask in the comments below. And if there's any coins that you know that I'm not covering already you would like me to cover on a daily basis, leave that in the comments below as well. And the charting used in this video is TradingView. There's an affiliate link in the description. You can check that out if you would like. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Till next time. Mm -hmm.